Hello everyone, this is MMA Interesting Prospect Podcast. Today our guest is Tyson Miller, who will be, who will be fighting on A1 Combat 17 this Friday. Hello uh, Tyson, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, thanks for having me on the show. I always appreciate the opportunity to get on some podcasts and get my name out there. I think that uh, your next fight would be a quite interesting one because you will be fighting against an undefeated fighter who never lost either as the amateur or the pro, but he also have uh, has some uh, some uh, like long break. So if you can tell me, what do you think about this opponent and how your camp is going right now? Um, I think he's a dangerous guy. Uh, I think that he hasn't lost because he also hasn't been tested. Some of the records for some of the guys that he beat I don't believe we're super stellar. I have much respect, obviously, for anybody that gets in the cage or anything like that. Uh, I just don't think that some of the guys he's fought have presented some of the problems that I can present in the cage. Um, I also think that he's going to come in with a lot of confidence, and that can be a good thing or a bad thing. You know, you never know. Uh, we're prepared for pretty much anything that's going to happen. Uh, my coach, Pablo Alfonso, out of Warrior Camp, when I sent him the tapology for the fight, he went onto his social media and went and checked everything out, checked out his previous fights, his opponents, and all those kinds of things. And he said, we should take the fight. So I took the fight, you know, because that's what when your coach says to do something, you should listen. And he believes that as long as we go out there and compete to the fullest, it should be a good night. And because he had uh, such a long break, it's a little bit, I think, a question mark because uh, you don't know how he looked like a like few weeks ago or a few months ago. So it can be like a, also a tricky fight for you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying. I definitely have been trying to not think about that part too much. I think that ring rust will definitely play a part of it. I also know that he'll probably be be better than he has been previously getting in the cage at least i would hope so right you take that long break and then you probably are training the whole time you're getting better that means by training um i also think that i the break that i took in the year off that i took because it's been a year since this this weekend that i also fought um the last time so we both took a big break and i took the break with the purpose of of coming back with a different not fighting well yeah with a different fighting style and to also uh not have to cut as much weight and to put my life into a place where i felt like i could compete against anyone um should i have to and then the other thing that i tell myself going into a fight like this is like for where i want to go everybody's going to be undefeated or the first you'll have to be the first person to do this or the first person to stop that or the first person to do whatever and if you want to be a champion at the highest level you have to look at those things and say to yourself that they haven't fought you yet. And that is why you will succeed. Right. Cause we have characters out there like uh, Ian Gary or Hamsat or uh, Shavkat Rachmanov. And you see those guys at 170 and those guys are incredible, right? Those guys are all, all three of those talents are elite. All three of those guys are, very talented uh we just saw shavkat take out jeff neal in pretty spectacular fashion we watched ian gary i mean he's going through some kind of adversity or whatever i'm not going to speak to that but because you know i don't know his life family situation but he did get dropped in his last fight i believe and then came back and won by finish and then we've seen hamsat continue to shine with his crazy ultra aggressive style in the fight that he just had with uzman uh, so what I say to myself is if I want to get to the top of the mountain, those three individuals are three people that I would have to fight anyway. So it would be better to start taking challenges now on the way there than to do what some of these guys do and cherry pick opponents that, you know, you can beat until you get there, right? Like my last fight didn't go the, my way. Um, I have no excuses. Uh, it doesn't matter how much weight I cut or what, how I was training or whatever. I, I took the fight. I got in the cage and I lost. That is what happened, right? Um, but because of it, I feel like I'm a much more dangerous fighter because of the year off that I took to focus on fighting. It sounds counterintuitive because I took a year off and didn't fight at all for a year. But the whole time I was trying to put my life into a place where... I felt like I could fight to the fullest of my ability, meaning that like I took up endurance running as a hobby. I ran 
I say almost two marathons because we did one 21 mile run and an actual full marathon uh, with a lot of buildup in between the two. Uh, most of it was in sand up and down the dunes near my house. Uh, I fixed a bunch of hip and ankle and knee mobility. I'm walking around. I think I'm walking around like almost 15 pounds lighter than I used to before I got down to 170 uh, so that I don't have to cut as much water which is terrible i went back to the gym with a big focus on the striking fundamentals because i i came into this game with my grappling game mostly established and being that i wrestled in high school and college and then also competed at the black belt level for jiu-jitsu for a while and uh i found a new coach i fired like half my team and yeah man it's uh it's been a it's been a great journey and i'm excited to get in there and 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 test myself against someone who is who is unbeaten and see what happens. Uh, and in your last fight, you you fought for the A1 uh, combat title. I think that it's a quite important title on the regional scene. And uh, your opponent was, uh, maybe his record was not perfect, but he, he is overall a good fighter. And what do you think, um, like, uh, do, what do you think you could do better in that fight? I could not cut 30 pounds in like 10 days. That would have been, um, that would have been a big deal. Uh, I could have kept my hands up better. Uh, even if I was tired, I, there was a lot of things that I needed to change. And I had to learn, I had to learn those lessons that way and lose that fight the way that I did in order to become who I am today. And I hope to showcase a lot of that. Uh, next Friday night. Do you think that after this performance, uh, this Friday, you will you will get another title shot? I would hope so. I would hope so. I would hope that I could go in there and put on a performance that shows people I am as serious as I say I am about this career. I want to do the things that I've set out to do and I am who I believe I am. And that I would deserve another title shot in better fashion, right? Like I, against my better judgment, I did take the last one on short notice. Uh, it's not an excuse. I did cut a lot of weight, but I would have loved to, given that fight the respect it deserved in actually preparing with a full 12 week or 10 week, 10 to 12 week camp for it. Uh, and you, you uh, have uh, have uh, you has only uh, you you have only uh, five fights, but but you fought in Bellator, in LFA, in A one combat. So almost all of your pro fights were in uh, actually a very very big promotions. So it it uh, is an interesting fact. Yeah, I have managed to somehow skip the casino part of the regional scene. Um, I would attribute that mostly to. People saying no, just people not wanting to fight. Because I haven't, I haven't lied. Like some of the, like I, okay, so it it sucks to say this, right? Because it's it's like it, it breaks the fourth wall, kind of for for behind the scenes of MMA. But I never made it a secret that I wrestled in college or that I competed at black belt for jujitsu or, um, or that I wrestled for as long as I did in high school and college. And a lot of those things for some guys, like I feel like there's a lot of MMA fighters that don't start actually taking grappling serious until they're until something bad happens in their amateur or pro career. And then they face a grappler where they're, where they face a level that they haven't been to yet. And then they stop wanting to compete against those kinds of guys, or they compete against people in their gyms that, have grappling experience that have a lot of grappling experience and that make them not want to take fights with other guys that have that grappling experience because it's no secret at this point right like i have i don't have a ton of fights but uh it's no secret that if i'm in trouble i'm gonna try to wrestle probably right and a lot of guys do not want to deal with that um i know the fans don't necessarily want us to grapple the entire time um I'm sure that every MMA fighter would tell you that in a perfect world, they just knock everybody out, get the get the show bonus, the win bonus, and the knockout bonus, right? Um, and that's what everybody wants to see anyways, kick necks and collect checks. But 
um, it is always important to be able to grapple in this sport, especially with the level that we're at now, the new era, let's say. Everybody can do everything pretty well, I would say. Uh, I mean, most of the elite guys at the top level right now, I feel like they're dropping people and then choking them out because they dropped them. Uh, like uh, uh, Shavkat had the kind of schoolyard, kind of rear naked choke choke on the side of the cage against Jeff Neal after he dropped him, which is also, fun fact, the same way that Jeff Neal finished his debut fight in the UFC. Yes, but you are right that it's like uh, quite rarely that the fighter is uh, taking someone down like uh, I, I'm not sure maybe Damian Maya who is like uh, going for like step by step to to finish a choke. Usually it's uh, like by, by like knockdown and then it's a uh, like quick finish, quick quick uh, rear naked. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, I and, and I also think that you know. If you if you've done some of the training to transition from grappling back to striking and striking back to grappling, it's it wears on you. So if you, if you were if you're worried about your gas tank in any way or the endurance that you have to go for 15 minutes, uh, that can be troublesome for sure. Uh, in Bellator, you you uh, fought twice, but you you fought uh, against a fighter named Gracie. It, it's it was uh, Ralan Gracie, and uh, because because uh, that you fought uh, against him, did you feel that that he may create some danger danger for you on the ground or you were like uh, let's say sure that that it would be a not a big problem for you i was actually pretty worried uh my dad called me after i told him i took the fight and i was started telling people i took the fight and asked me what i was doing and if i was sure that i should be doing that and i told him the same thing that i told you just now i told him that in order to get to where i want to go these are the people that i have to fight and he at the time he wasn't incredibly dangerous he's like oh for two or oh for three or something like that and i knew that the striking wasn't going to be super dangerous however i had seen him on online compete at a high level in jiu-jitsu is i mean he owns a school he's a gracie he also has a very established school in san francisco i believe and to the point where some of my friends here in humboldt county had told me that they had trained under him or learned from him at their school in san francisco because of how close it is and it was a big worry for sure. I was actually super worried about him getting in on my legs because most the most of the matches I've lost in jiu-jitsu were in leg lock entanglements, which has led me to to train a lot on escaping leg lock entanglements. Um, but I felt like the discrepancy in the wrestling category, the actual ability to hold me down or to get me down was going to be the big differential in that fight and that he wasn't going to be able to in which i don't think he actually had a successful takedown i did touch the mat with all with like both knees and a hand but i did get a reversal pretty quickly so i don't know if they actually scored it as a takedown or not but um that one worked out relatively in my favor and then the one after that um in LFA, we took that fight with a larger 170 pounder to see uh, how it would go. He was two and two or three and two at the time when we took that fight. He had fought a couple of super game opponents. I think he was just coming off of a fight that went the full 15 minutes in a pretty good back and forth. And we saw how tough he was. And my manager wanted me to test myself against someone that was going to come back in the cage definitely over 200 pounds and have a reach advantage that would be substantial and that went pretty well and then we took the title fight after that on short notice um my coach at the time uh believed that i was so much better than that guy that i should have taken it on short notice i believe that i should have said no and shouldn't have i should have given that fight a lot more respect than i did and uh he deserved it he earned it and uh it was not my night for sure but also, I think that that uh, that what you said that you fought, fought against a grappler against a ma ma much bigger opponent than the title fight, it, it means that you are a such an experienced guy, even if if uh, the, this amount of fights. So I think that it's also a it is an advantage for you because you are not a usually like usually guy who is a six fights in MMA. That's very true. I definitely feel that way too, man. I mean. 
there were some guys that I was afraid to say yes to that I said yes to before this fight that turned me down um, in the lead up to like finding an opponent because you know you, have, you you can't force people to fight you you can't bully people into it like both uh, parties have to agree uh, but a couple of the guys I was like man I don't know how it's gonna go I'm gonna have to train my ass off for this and then they said no on the other side and I was just like oh okay you know what actually that wasn't that I'm okay I'm okay with that um, this fight was super interesting and scary in the sense that. I mean, shoot, man, three years is usually some people are what, like two stripes? They got two stripes on their blue belt or they're almost to their purple belt, right? So it is totally possible that he comes in and I come in with these new skill sets and we just drag each other through hell for 15 minutes, um, which is part of why I've taken the training definitely as serious as I have. Um I don't know how much I want to speak to exactly what I've been doing because if he watches it or something like that, then like he'll know exactly what we're prepared for. And I don't know if I necessarily want that, but after the fight, I can definitely tell you everything um, that we were doing in the buildup um, and everything that we were planning for. Uh, but the, my favorite part of preparing for this fight has also been the absence he's had from the cage because it's given me an opportunity to really ask myself, all different kinds of questions. How do we want to strike? How do we want to strike into takedowns? How do we want to defend takedowns? Do we want to defend takedowns or do we want to welcome a grappling exchange? Uh, do we want to initiate the grappling exchange? Like I've gotten to take the year off that I did to actually ask myself more questions of how do I want to operate as a fighter and how I want, how do I want to be seen? What do I want to do rather than, okay, this is the next opponent. This is what he's good at. We have to neutralize these threats in order to do these things to win, right? So I've gotten to just focus on getting better all around, which makes it has made me pretty happy. I'm I'm win, lose, or draw. I'm very proud of the training that we've done to get to this point and of everything that we've had to overcome just to get in the cage this time. And if you can uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, camp that uh, that you are training in, what what are the, your main sparring partners and who your coaches? Okay, so uh, I had a head coach retire um, over the last year. Um, so the coach that I had learned under and had given has given me my brown belt in jujitsu. His name is John Thompson. He's gotten me to this point, which I would say we've had a pretty good amount of success you know we're at four and one we're all, we've only fought on major promotions i've never got to fight in my own backyard i've had to travel i've had to deal with going to other people's homes forever um the mentality that we developed through that was what's more warrior-like than going to someone else's village and taking their things right um it's yeah I, that's that's how we try to think of it as brutal as that sounds. Um, the head coach that I have now is Pablo Alfonso. He has, uh, well, his star pupil that's in the UFC is Terrence McKinney, T-Rex at 155. Um, I called my manager when I was told that my head coach was going to retire and that he was stepping out. And my manager said that he believed going up to Spokane and, and going to warrior camp in Spokane would be a gym that I would connect with a coach that would really like take my games to the next level. Um, I live in a pretty rural area. I literally live in a cabin in the woods in, in Northern California. So my girlfriend and I decided that I would go up there for like a week at a time, a couple of times to go train and, and learn new skills and, and sharpen the skills that I do have. The questions and the training partners that I had, I got to go experience up there in a place that has produced guys who have gotten to where I want to be. I literally asked Coach Pablo if he could, like, I told him that I wanted to be in the UFC. I told him I wanted to do my best to become a champion. I told him I wanted to fight the best and be an elite, an elite fighter. And I said that you've taken people there. Can you take me too? And he said, Absolutely, I think I can. Just keep training, and we'll figure this out. Uh, each time I went up there, I learned things from him that I felt like I needed to go home and train with. Um, I have a pretty good amount of training partners at home that are willing to work with me. Um, like all of their names, uh, 
might be too hard for me to list off, but the main training partners I have, I've had for a long time. Uh, one of my best friends, his name is Colton. He's been my main jiu-jitsu training partner for a long time. He's He helped me train for other things as well. He helped me train for a Naga tournament where I went unscored on and I won a Naga belt. That was awesome. Um, there's a 19... He's 19 or 20 now, but there's a 19 or 20 year old kid who has been doing Taekwondo since he was like eight. So he comes in and tries to kick me in the face. And I feel like that's, and he's pretty quick because he fights like 145. So that's always a great training partner to have somebody that's a little faster than you that can push the pace. Um, I have a, uh, I have one other training part, two other training partners that are about my size. One is uh one and O as a pro fighter. And I think he was three or four and O as an amateur fighter with a little wrestling background in high school. Um, so I've gotten some good grappling rounds with him. And then I have a larger training partner who walks around, I believe, like 210, 205 uh, for jiu-jitsu. He's a jiu-jitsu nerd now. It's, he loves watching videos. He'll ask me all kinds of questions about stuff he sees on Instagram. And I'm like, you're a brown belt. Does this work? Have you tried this in competition? I'll, I'll try to figure it out for him or with him. Uh, and then I have a, uh, I got a big pad holder who who turned his life around a little bit later in life. He's He's in his late 30s, I believe. Cause I can't remember his exact age, but he wants to do some PKBs and, and has had two kickboxing matches, but he walks around at like 220. So he's my favorite pad holder. Cause I can hit the pads as hard as I want to for as long as I want to. And it doesn't seem to face him that much. Uh, one of the other training partners I've had, his name's Austin. And uh, man, it's one of those kids that like comes into the gym and he absolutely loves martial arts to the point where if you're doing anything wrong, he's gonna make fun of you for it, right? So he's sitting down watching YouTube videos all the time, and I'm like, hey, why do you why do you drop your hands when you do this, or why why do you look so weird when you throw this kick or whatever it is? And uh, between all of that, and then also one of my other training partners, he hasn't been around as much for this camp because he's a full time wrestling coach now, and he's kind of stepped away from his MMA career. Uh, is Cass Bell? He fought for Bellator. I think he has seven fights in Bellator. Um, he fought Rafion Stotts and uh, Jarnell Lugo, I think, are the two biggest names that he fought. But I've gotten a lot of uh, tips and advice from him as well on how to handle those situations, um, especially going into moments like these. Like uh, He fought Stotts when Stotts is on the start of his winning streak before the belt. And then after losing to Stotts, Stotts then went on to win the belt, but I believe he was five and zero oh at the time of actually taking that fight where Stotts was well over 10 pro bouts, I believe, and had already fought and lost to, uh, DeVos Shelley, the, the UFC fighter that's at 135, who's Aljamain Sterling's training, main training partner. And then also just, uh, getting a lot of confidence from some of the other guys too, like up North, um, there were guys that definitely pushed me and problems that I had to present. I forget the name of the kid that uh, took me down a couple of times, made me have to get up in the cage, but that was a good experience. I, I got taken down in a couple of rounds, had to get up, take him back down, get my points back and then go through some adversity. It was awesome. And then uh, my main guy up there, his name's Brian, the ice man, the ice man is uh, he's, he's been fighting on the regional scene nationally for a couple of years now. He's got well over 10 fights. And the guy's a the guy's a killer, man. He uh, he he helped me a lot every time I went up there. He's helped me get to training, helping me find training sessions, helping me like very welcoming into the gym. I would say he feels like their team captain from like the respect that everyone gives him. They look at him like a chief, right? And uh, from talking to him and and training with him, I've gotten a lot of uh, confidence for this fight as well. Because you know, anytime you lose, you have to go through that fire of like what if it happens again and it's like well it already happened so the worst thing that could happen already happened so it's all like go compete and be free from it you know and uh the fact that he has as many fights as he has and has all the experience that he has uh being a training partner makes me feel good when when one of the text techniques is is successful or or not successful right like if i do something wrong and get punched in the face or if i successfully finish a takedown it's like okay this is someone that actually is a good fighter that i'm doing this training with that i now know this technique works or needs work you know so yeah a lot a lot has gone into it i even i, I got a running coach for this one i get up and go running with the uh, my buddy mike shout out to mike um he's the one that pushed me through a marathon and the 21 mile run uh yeah, man. We uh no stone left unturned for this one. It's a little bit like Rocky four or five fights Drago. Yeah. 
yeah, so it it might be a best performance of your career because of the training camp that you that you had. Yeah, we did a lot of soul searching. I personally believe that I'm in a place where I will be able to compete better than I ever have. Um, that being said, he probably is too, you know? So it, it could be two personal bests and you guys get to see a war. Um, could be one-sided either way. Who knows? I've been trying to really focus on just going out there and letting it go just 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 flow right like just like bruce lee says just just empty your mind and flow that's it because there's nothing left to do now but make weight and do the damn thing and uh yeah he's unbeaten it's been three years for him it's been a year for me um and we'll see what happens and in the perfect world uh, how many fights would you like to have this year because uh, because you had uh, only one uh, last year, so so how many would you like? I would like to fight three or four times this year. Um, my manager and I were talking about it actually like a week ago. Um, we're gonna aim for three for sure. But if any of them go super well and we can have a quick turnaround, then we'll try to squeeze in a fourth one. Uh, the only way to climb the ranks is to climb the ranks. So, got to be active. Do you think that the contender series this year is is a possibility for you? I'm hoping and praying that by the end of the year, it will be a possibility. I know for a fact that they do want guys that have more experience. Um, they, I know that they want guys to have at least eight fights now. Uh, from everyone that I've talked to behind the scenes, they want people to have at least eight or nine fights worth of experience, whereas their ninth or tenth fight is their UFC debut or their contender series debut um, for two reasons. One, when you get to the UFC, you made it. Now you have to, you know, this is your job. How far can you take it? You might only have this chance. Obviously, we have those stories of guys that that get in. It's a little too early in their career. They get out. They go fight a couple more times and then they go back substantially harder than getting there sustaining a career there for a long time and then going through and and staying in the ufc but if you meet that contender series window and you fail it doesn't matter that you lost you have the contender series banner on your sure dog and on your topology and many guys are going to treat you like you are you were in the ufc because to get that topology or sorry to get that contender series shot they have to have believed a little bit that you were ready to compete in the ufc so it's it's it can be hard for some guys to find fights after that or to even find fights that are even kind of favorable for them right they start getting calls from russian champions or 21 and 0 for eagle fc or whatever um that's just the first name i thought of I, i don't think they do that but yeah but still, if you will win this fight, maybe the next fight will be a title fight, then title defense, and then you will be a seven and one. So it will be eight fights. So so maybe like September of October, it will be a, your like big opportunity to get there. That would be that would be a, that would be a dream come true. I would love for that to be. Uh, that is that is what I'm hoping for. That is what I'm working for, training for, and praying for. Um, it seems like forever ago, I was like a 13 year old kid watching GSP videos on YouTube and running sprints out behind my house. Um, it's all I've ever really wanted to do. Um, and it is absolutely insane to me for one, that that is a possibility. My year could go that way. Um, cause when you start this thing, you don't like think about what it's going to be like on when you're getting there. Um, and then two, yeah, as long as all goes well, and we keep up the same thing that same things that we have been doing. Uh, I truly believe that I'm in the best shape physically, mentally, and spiritually that I've ever been in. And if I, there was going to be a year for me to do that, it would be now. This would be the first time I think as a person and as a martial artist, I feel like I could actually complete that feat. And do you have a fighter in mind, uh, the fighter from the UFC that you would like to face? It's a more uh, dream fight scenario. So maybe it will not happen, but but let's say in your head, do you have the, the kind of fighter that you would like to, to fight? Oh, man. Um, I would. I have always wanted to, to, to fight my idol in GSP. That'll never happen. But I would have loved to test myself against someone that everyone looked at as Superman, basically. 
Uh, I mean, with the Superman jab, he pretty much made himself that, but uh, that would be a dream fight. And then I, I pretty regularly tell people that I think that out of the three names that I mentioned earlier, I don't know if we see Hamsa back at 170 very much. It seems like he cuts a phenomenal amount of water to get to 170. Uh, I thought he looked a lot healthier at 185 with against Usman. Um, Usman, another guy that cuts an insane amount of water. Um, I'm hoping and praying that the sport moves more towards maybe another weight class or two, and then also influencing guys to not cut more than like five to eight pounds of water, like one FC, right? One FC is doing the the hydration thing. I know that some fighters talk about how they can still cheat it, but still it's uh, if they made a 65 pound weight class and then move 70 to 75, 85 and then 95, I feel like it would end a lot of, the really bad things are happening, right? Like some guys die, um, kidney failure. Uh, I mentioned I cut a lot for them. My last fight, I swear it took me like two weeks just to get food to like digest in my stomach after that cut. It was bad. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that, that that changes. So I don't think we'll see Humpset back at 170. And then I think that, uh, Ian Gary will definitely have a chance or be a contender and be around. It seems like his, his outside life, however, might hinder his inside the cage life. But that leaves the one monster in uh, Shavkat Rachmanov. And I really believe that if I'm going to win a title out of those like three who have kind of risen to the top of the of the crowd, uh, it, that guy will probably have it. And it'll probably be that guy that whoever gets there has to take the belt from. And uh, so my second dream fight would be him for the belt years from now which would be cool and uh you you were asking me how i felt about being the first to uh wanting to be the first to defeat a fighter who hasn't been defeated yet um man being first is high on my list of many things for a bunch of reasons but the number one reason that i love the sound of that is because of just who i am as a person um, my grandmother escaped Laos uh, during the Vietnamese War. Um, long story short, they assassinated my grandfather. and He was a military official. She was kept in a concentration camp for months and then escaped with around 80. And out of the 80 that escaped and fled to Thailand that night, only 12 of them made it across the river. And... I feel like in the USA, we're seeing a lot of firsts out of the Lao community. And I think I saw three or four uh, division one football players, which means we'll probably see one or two of them in the NFL, which will be the first ever's there. Um, Andre Sukumta was the first ever UFC fighter. I would like to be the first ever Asian, also La like Laotian uh, UFC champion because we haven't had a, an Asian UFC male champion. We've just had uh, Zhang Wei Li for uh, the girls. Uh, okay, Tyson. So uh, thank you for for the conversation. I hope that that this win uh, will will like end your uh, by your victory and and uh, maybe maybe in in next fight there will be a, a one combat title because I think that that you have a really really like. Uh, cool uh, cool style to to watch and and i think that eventually the ufc will be uh, your your uh, destination thank you um um the main upgrade to the style that we have changed would be to take some off the punches to throw punches and bunches instead of trying to throw it just 80 90% all night and uh, I think that everyone will enjoy the hyperactivity that I want to conduct with the new endurance factor that I've added to the game. So definitely it will be uh, worth to, to tune in, in uh, to, to watch uh, A1 Combat on uh, UFC Fight Pass. Absolutely. Um, win, lose, or draw, whether I'm winning or losing as well in the cage, I plan to be in his face doing something the whole time. It's only 15 minutes, and, you know, after 
God damn it. I mean, I spent a year just running <laughs> to be closer to weight and to have the gas tank to just be in somebody's face for 15 minutes. So um, definitely tune in and I'm, man, I'm just ready to do this thing. That's all I can think about for the past like week or two. I'm just ready to get in there. Okay. So, so thanks for, for the conversation. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for having me on the podcast.